Today we're going to continue our discussion of average rate of change. And we're going to look at average rate of change from the perspective of an equation today and a table. Uh, we've already looked at it from the perspective of a graph. When we're finding the average rate of change, we're still finding the rate at which the y values or the outputs change compared to the x values, which are the inputs change. And the mathematical definition is given to you in this box here. And I do want to change uh, one little piece on this. But the average rate of change is f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. So the difference today is that we have the equation written in function notation compared to when we talked about it the previous class of the slope formula. What I would like to change on here is that I have delta f divided by delta x. I would like to make that a delta y divided by delta x. This had a little technical difficulty on that for whatever reason on the last notes as well. So the first example here where we're going to use this formula in a couple minutes gives us a chance to review um, function notation. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to start left on your paper so that you have enough space. But if you infringe in question B, it'll be all right because we have, we'll, we'll make room. It, it will eventually fit on there, but just start left on your paper. So what we're looking for, we're given this function 2x squared minus 10. And we want to calculate the average rate of change for the function over the following intervals. So what we have to know, first of all, is that this is A and this is B. Because again, if you look above in your box, you've got F of B minus F of A over B minus A. So we can fit something into the formula already. We know what B is. B is 3. And A is negative 2, and I'm going to put parentheses around that. So we can fill in that part of the formula. But what we don't know right now is what does f of b equal and what does f of a equal. So we're going to go back and use our formula to figure that out. So we want to figure out f of a, which in this case is negative 2. We're putting this back into the function, and this is where you're going left on your paper equals 2x squared minus 10. And we're going to take this value of negative 2. I'm going to put it back into our equation wherever we see x. So it's 2 <coughs> times negative 2 squared minus 10. And remember your order of operations. If you're going through this and you're not top typing it into your calculator, to calculate out the order of operations, we have to do exponents before we multiply. In other words, we have to figure out, well, what does negative 2 times negative 2 equal before we do any other multiplication? So this is 2 times 4 minus 10. And 2 times 4 is 8 minus 10, which is negative 2. And it's coincidence there, but what we just figured out is we figured out that f of a equals negative 2. I called the negative 2a at the very beginning of the problem. Now, if you can fit in work right underneath that, we also need to figure out, well, what does f of b equal? Well, f of b, our b is 3, and we're also going to put that back into our same function, which is the 2x squared minus 10 that's given to us in the problem. <coughs> so we're going to take this value of 3, we're going to put it back into our function wherever we see x, and we end up with 2 times 3 
3 squared minus 10. And once again, order of operations says that we need to figure out what the exponent equals first. So this is 2 times 9, because 3 squared is 3 times 3 minus 10. And 2 times 9 is 18 minus 10, which gives us 8. And what we just found out with our calculations here is that f of b equals 8. Well, we are filling in our formula here. And the formula that we're filling in is that this is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And maybe I should have written that there, but we already filled it in, so I'll leave it like it is. Well, what did we just calculate for f of b? Well, we look down our paper a little way, and we see that f of b is 8. So we're going to fill that in. Minus f of a, that was our first calculation. f of a equals negative 2. And we're dividing by b minus a. Well, we've got 3 minus a negative 2. And when we have a double negative, that becomes positive. So 3 plus 2, which is 5. And now we can finish calculating out the average rate of change. Double negative up in the numerator, the top of our fraction, gives us a positive. So we end up with 8 plus 2 is 10 divided by 5, and 10 divided by 2. 10 divided by 5 is 2, which is our average rate of change. Reminder that the average rate of change is slope. So that's what we just came up with here. It's just slope calculated with function notation. So let's look at question B from a little bit different perspective. I'm going to use the calculator on this method. And down here at the bottom of your paper, you've got some words which are, let's use our graphing calculator. We're going to graph f of x. So mine still might be in this calculator, but it's not going to be, actually, now that I think of it. So if we turn on our calculators, we probably have a screen that looks roughly like this. And then we want to go to y equals to graph this. And again, mine should be empty there. And what we're going to type in is we're going to type in this function that's given to us, which is 2x squared um, minus 10. And we don't really need to look at the picture. What we really want to do is our next step here, which is use the table to find the ordered pairs needed. Well, we're looking at this, that this average rate of change over the interval where x is between 5 and 9. So we want to pull up our table here, and we can do that by going from second and then the graph button. That gives us a table. And again, what we're looking at is we're looking at from 5 to 9. Well, the ordered pair at 5, as you can see on the table, the ordered pair at 5 is 40. 5, 40. The ordered pair at 9 from our calculator screen is 9, 152. And then we can go back 
if you don't like the slope formula with function notation, we can go back and fill in y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Here's x1, here's y1. Here's x2, there's y2. So we end up with 152 minus 40 divided by 9 minus 5. And 152 minus 40 is 112. 9 minus 5 is 4. And we can type that in. 112 divided by 4 is 28. So let's try another problem as we flip our paper over. In this one it says the function h of s equals 2s squared plus 6 describes the height of a bouncy ball seconds after it has been dropped to the ground. We want to find the average rate of change on the following intervals. These rates of change describe the speed at which the bouncy ball is moving slash bouncing. <coughs> Well, first of all, I'd like to continue to use the calculator on this problem. But what I want to tell you is, is that you can't type in S. Use X for the variable S. So when we go over here to our calculator, we go back to the screen Y equals, and I'm going to press clear. And again, we're typing in 2s squared plus 6, but we're going to use x instead of s. So it's 2x squared plus 6. If you're using the Inspire, the calculator that has a mouse, you have to press Enter now. Those of us using the calculator that I have on the screen, we don't have to press Enter. What we want to look at is we want to look at the table. And to get to our table, we're going to press second, and then the graph button, which takes us up to the blue feature on the graph button, which says table. So here's our table for this problem. And what it says here is we want to look at the value when our input is zero. Well, when our input is 0, our output is 6. On my screen, it's the very first one. Some of you might have to scroll through your table on your screen. Then our other value here, it says when s is 0 to when s is 2, well, at 2, our value is 14. And we want to figure out the average rate of change. Use the function notation if you prefer. Use your slope formula, which is probably more comfortable to you. But when we fill it in, it's 14 minus 6 over 2 minus 0. And 14 minus 6 is 8, and 2 minus 0 is 2. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. thing is on part B, <coughs> part B, same table. So we don't have to change much, but we have a different interval this time. We're looking at the bouncy ball from one second to four seconds. So I can't see it very well, but I'll, if I can make it a little bit smaller. So from one second, what we see is 8. When we input 1, we get out 8. At 4 seconds, looking at our table, 
we get 38, and then we can once again fill in the formula. And the thing is, this formula is the same as f of b minus f of a all divided by b minus a. But it's just a little bit different perspective. 38 minus 8 over 4 minus 1. 38 minus 8 is 30 divided by 4 minus 1, which is 3. 30 minus, sorry, 30 divided by 3 is 10. <coughs> Do you think the movement of the bouncy ball would produce a straight line? And you have a couple of people nodding, no. What needs to be the same for us to have a straight line? The slope, the average rate of change. This 4 and this 10 need to be the same value for us to think that it's going to be linear. And because those are different values, it is not going to be. So now we've got a couple of examples with the calculator. The nice part here is that the table is already given for us. And then what we want to do is we want to find our average rate of change over these intervals. But we didn't have to type in anything. We're already given the table. We didn't have to use our calculator to get it. So when we take a look at this first one here that says when x is between 5 and 19, well, here's where x is 5, and here's where x is 19. And what that tells us, then, is the ordered pairs that we can use on this particular problem. At 5, we have an output of 1. At 19, we have an output of 22. And once again, we can fill in our formula Here's x1, here's y1. Here's x2, there's y2. What is 2? Minus 1. Over 19 minus 5. And 22 minus 1 is 21. 19 minus 5 is 14. And we've got our calculators out, so let's look at that in the calculator. If we take alpha y equals, that gives us enter, it gives us our fraction button, and then 21 and 14. Notice that that simplifies to be 3 halves. 7 goes into 21 3 times. 7 goes into 14 twice. So this is 3 halves. Well, let's look at the same table with different inputs, different interval. And in this particular interval, we're going from 11 to 45. So here's where we have 11. And here's the 45. So we have an ordered pair of 11 10 and 4561. And once again, we can fill in our value. Here's x1, here's y1, there's x2 and y2. And we have 61 minus 10 divided by 45 minus 11. Well, 61 minus 10 is 51. 45 minus 11 is 5 minus 1 is 4. 34? And because we can, let's see what happens when we type that in our calculator. Again, the fraction button is alpha y equals number 1, which is enter. 51, 34 gives us three halves. So when we look down here to finish our notes, it says 
Does this table represent a linear function? Yes. And how can we tell? Well, what we see over the first interval, we ended up with an average rate of change of 3 halves. The second interval, we also ended up with an average rate of change of 3 halves. So when I answer this question, I said the average rate of change is the same for both intervals. You could say the slope is the same for both intervals.